Barb and I always have great talks off air, folks. You should listen in sometime. Um, we're, we're, we just had this wonderful conversation. We're going to expand on it with, with our listeners today. And, and you were kind of talking about just better than. And I think we need to break that down and explain it to the folks. But, folks, this is really about rebuilding, um, reshaping you. And I think Barb's got some excellent points, and we want to share them with you today. So, Barb, uh, good to see you. Hope everything's well. Let's, let's get the show rolling. Things are good, Dave. Great to see you, too. And, uh, yeah, it's a really relevant topic because people are – struggling and rebuilding in a lot of ways in their life, looking for improvement. But it's ultimately our mindset that holds us back or lets us go forward. And that's a difficult concept for people because, you know, there are programs, there are tools, there's this, there's that. But if you're not there here, then all of it can seem insurmountable. And, and I think a lot of that is people have a very elitist attitude of what they want or expect of themselves. And that can stop you from even starting something in the first place. Because if you can't see and appreciate all of the journey in between, or maybe you do, and that's really, really daunting, but you don't break it down into the little itty bitty pieces. And we had that talk about, you know, when an athlete's had an injury or for my, for myself in concussion recovery still, is that if I don't look at where I was at the beginning, then if I have a bad day, that can seem like the end of the road and make it really difficult to go forward. So journaling, watching that process carefully, I I always have my clients journal, but it's not something I've actually done myself before. But during this recovery, it's been so important because at the initial part of it, so many things were out of whack that I couldn't see the forest for the trees, basically. So understanding where I was then writing down, okay, well, initially to walk around the block, I would have to hold somebody's arm because my vision was off. My vestibular balance was all off. And so that went from a little while of that to being able to walk but using my hands kind of like this to maintain my balance to then I could walk with my arms moving forward to then I could walk with one of my dogs and then eventually now I can walk both of the dogs if it's a good day but it's it's measuring and understanding that the next day might not look like what you want it to but it's still going to be better than it was. And so when you journal that, when you're charting that, when you're understanding that and not looking at what your expectation of yourself is in the distant future, then you can appreciate how far you've come. And that's huge regardless, you know, whether you're recovering, whether you're ill, whether you want to lose weight, doesn't matter what the motivation is. But if that mindset is there, you can move forward and it can be better than it was the day before. It's 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 an interesting concept because I kind of relate it when we were talking a little bit earlier to uh, one of the last month's article in the Hub that I did on commitment. And one of, one of the aspects that I had worked through in the last year was looking at my running and seeing how I was, I was always getting constantly injured. I was struggling back and forth and I couldn't find consistency, which I felt was, which I thought was the base that you need. So, um, just basically starting over. And what I just, all I made this simple commitment was to, in my, my situation, every situation is different. Is just run one mile a day, every day. Like just, just put it out there and, and see how far I can go. And I, seven months later, there's been no problems. But what I found was my body began to realize what it used to do and then it focused. So every day my body knew it was time to go run. And it took over from the brain where maybe the brain was saying, I just don't feel like it today, but the commitment was there and the body understood it. So you realistically, your body adapts and sort of motivates you. And I think a lot of people miss that sometimes. I don't know if I'm legit on this or not, I'm asking you. But I do think there's that correlation. And then once your body understands the same thing you're going through, your body sort of that muscle memory has been created, right? 
So even those days that you feel a little not quite ready to roll, you get something out of it. You still get something out of it, which I think for the general population is critical these days. I just don't see enough of that. No, you're right. And, you know, lots of reasons why people are struggling for certain. But, yeah, the activity, any thing that you're doing to try and move forward, there are hormones and messengers and, you know, endorphins and things like that, especially with physical activity. Uh, it's critical that people get themselves moving because that does wonders for your mental health and for your confidence and for your muscle tone. So, you know, there's physiological benefit and there's functional benefit, but the body does adjust to those things. It gets stronger, it gets better, and it gets easier so that you can push yourself a little bit further. And and that's all part of the, the growing and learning process. Uh, I strongly encourage people to work with somebody that can be that support person. You know, we need some sort of team. Nobody's nobody's meant to go it alone. Uh, in my recovery, I'm certainly not going it alone. I, I have a team of people that I've resourced, uh, you know, because some of the answers I w was getting were, well, you're just going to have to live with it. The damage is done. And I'm like, well, hell no. I don't agree with that at all. Um, I know where I was. I know the capacity our brains have to, you know, make changes and new synapses and, and all of those things. And yeah, there's there's still bad days. Uh, if I get overtired or, you know, really push myself, then I have a little bit of, of trouble right now with what's called expressional aphasia, where I think I've said the right word, but... You know, the other day we had a spider running across the counter at the apothecary and it was rather large and startled me and I I did end up squishing it. I'm sorry, spider. But um, I came home and I told Brian I'd squished it with a potato, not a paper towel. <laughs> and it was just like my brain knew the word that it was trying to find. I knew what I'd done, but it just didn't come out right. And And so I had to laugh at myself. You know, it was a little scary because when that happens, it's like, oh, my gosh, my brain, you know, am I ever going to be normal? But what's normal, right? Who's right. normal? It, it's all just what it is. But, you know, it's it's learning to laugh at yourself. It's learning that just try just yeah. whatever it is. I don't care if it's five steps more. I don't I agree. care if drink one more glass of water this day or have one more bite of vegetables and make sure, you know, maybe it's just looking at your plate and making sure that you've got protein and healthy fat and a healthy carbohydrate on it. You know, that for some people is huge. If you're always eating a processed food or a processed meal, just making those little changes that maybe you just have one apple a day you don't normally have that's still better than right. right you don't get to the top of the mountain in one leap it's still one step at a time regardless of who you are regardless of your conditioning before your before your concussion you're working strongly with the metabolic program then you had your yeah. concussion did the metabolic program actually help you during going through this concussion phase Just it made an impact as well because you were doing so great, so wonderful, and then this setback. But, you know, I think you'd built that base through the metabolic program that probably helped you more than you realized. And that was that, that little bit of step every time to get things better. Can I say that? Did that happen? That is absolutely true. And the reason for that is because with the metabolic balance program, it reduces inflammation and regulates every metabolic process. So all 50 hormones in our body are regulated when you follow this program. So regardless of what it is, you know, some people don't join the program to lose weight. Some people just have a lot of pain in their body or they want to perform at their optimal. So it's just giving yourself the tools to be your best version of yourself and to reduce inflammation, which is incredibly damaging, whether it's your heart, your joints, your brain function, okay, all sorts of disorders of the brain, um, you know, 
mental health issues or dementias or diseases like Parkinson's, all of those have to do with the level of inflammation in our bodies. And our brains, the average person only uses three to 5% of their brain. And having had eight concussions now, that's a darn good thing because the brain has the ability to, provided an area hasn't been completely and irreparably damaged, that it can create new synapses in that space. So, you know, I've been really, really fortunate that way, despite everything that's happened. And the metabolic balance program has absolutely kept me on track because it's helped me stay in a better state mentally and physically to go through the healing process because there was a lot of damage to the spine um, with the fall as well. And, uh, you know, so the whole recovery process is expedited by being on this program for certain. Yeah. It's been and the great. last point I want to bring up today is a little bit that I've noticed with folks, and you mentioned it earlier, is when you start to sort of look for those new goals in your life and those new challenges, folks, it's better to start small. Like it's, it's you know, if if you walk 200 meters every day or do little things to build on to those components, like you explained about, even with your diet, everything changes once you get feeling better. You, you just naturally go to more uh, a positive progression. So I just remind folks that, you know, you don't, you don't go out and run the marathon the first day. It's those baby steps to rebuild. And I think a great show today. I love talking about these aspects of folks that can help folks sort of rebuild their lives too, both physically, mentally, and, and make it more sustainable and enjoyable for sure. Yeah. And, and that's something, you know, in my practice, I teach people moderation and balance because an elitist attitude is not moderation. And especially when it comes to physical conditioning, that's often when people get hurt right at the start, they decide I could join a gym. Yeah. Hey, that's wonderful. You're in the right space with the right people. But if you set your goals too high and you end up injured, then you've stopped yourself before you start. And then you are at more of a deficit than if you hadn't done it in the first place because you didn't start out with just better than. You didn't condition. Yeah. I mean, think of an infant learning how to crawl or walk. The number of times they fail before they're successful at that. And it's a wonder that we all just don't continue to roll on the floor or scoot across on our butts or whatever, because it's a lot of head bumps. It's a lot of, you know, failures. But there's something that in their heads, they understand that this is something they can do. This is something they can learn. And there's a motivation. So don't let life knock that out of you. Don't let people in your circle knock that out of you. Because if this is where it needs to be and you've got that focus, find the people that are going to help you be successful that way and find out where your life can go and how it can get better than it was or is right now. And just build, rebuild your confidence because exactly what you said. When folks they they set those goals too high, and then they're they're you know they're very disappointed in themselves. But it's just that you're reaching you're starting out a little reaching a little too high, folks. And that's everybody does it. I did it. Yeah. You've did it. Just start easy. Look at where your potential is, and you'll build your confidence. And, and like Barb says, if you have that life coach, have someone in there that's supporting you. Be on a team that can can build that confidence. I think that's critical. I, I, I see that every day. Um, great show today, Barb. I know you got to get to work at Dover Apothecary. Say hi to Mike that's for me. Um, have a great day. And thanks for doing this, taking the time. I really appreciate it. You're so welcome, Dave. Take care, everybody.